Coming up, Destiny hooks us up with some local happenings in Weekend Wizard. Chloe fangirls a little too much in li literature. We come together to talk about our favorite movies in Front Row, and I wrap it up with some games to look forward to in Level Up. Welcome to the Lakefront Entertainment. Hi, welcome to Lakefront Entertainment. We're super glad you could join us. We're ready for summer vacation. Like, we're really ready for summer vacation. We've still got finals ahead of us, but I believe we'll make it through. Just don't forget, overstudying isn't gonna help anything. So we put together some small distractions for you to help with the stress of the end of the semester. Let's head over to Destiny. She gives us some help with getting out of the dorms. Take it away, Destiny. Thanks, JC. Welcome to Weekend Wizard, everyone. I hope you've all had some adventures since the last show. I know I have. Let's jump into events happening around San Antonio so you can join in on the fun. Fiesta San Antonio is still going strong with events until April 30th. Battle of Flowers Parade is on April 28th. This is the oldest and longest parade of Fiesta San Antonio. The Fiesta Flambeau Parade is on April 29th. This is a wonderful event that Olu has participated in during past years. So come out, support your school, and see all the amazing floats light up the night. Fiesta Nueva is on April 30th, a mariachi worship service followed by an afternoon filled with games and rides for children, as well as food trucks make this event fun for the entire family. The ninth annual Fiesta concert is on April 30th. The San Antonio Symphonic Band gives a free concert to the community. I had the opportunity to attend Oyster Bake at St. Mary's this past weekend and I had an amazing time. I'd never had oysters before in my life, but I figured it's Fiesta, so why not? It was an experience I'm sure I won't forget. SA Zoo Salutes is a month-long celebration from May 1st to May 31st. The San Antonio Zoo is honoring active duty, retired, and veteran members of the military with free admission. So if you're associated with the military, bring your military ID to the gate and enjoy the day. From May 2nd to May 7th, the show Finding Neverland will be at the Majestic Theater. This show explores the life of playwright J.M. Barry and the origins of the beloved character of Peter Pan. This sounds like such an interesting story and I'd love to go to see this one. If you feel like this is the most amazing thing you've heard since the dawn of time or just want to see something entertaining, you can purchase tickets online at Ticketmaster.com. The newest installment of Julianne and Derek Huff's Move Tour, Move Beyond, is in town on May 20th. I went to last year's show, and I must say that if you haven't seen Julianne and Derek perform, you are missing out. All the reviews of this year say that it's the best one so far. So if you can get your hands on some tickets, enjoy the show. Alamo City Comic Con is here May 26th to May 28th. Celebrity guests include Mark Pellegrino, Katrina Law, Dolph Lundgren, Dave Bautista, Kristen Boer, and Rob Schneider. Don't miss the opportunity to meet the artists and writers that create some of your favorite comic books. You can purchase your passes online at eventbrite.com. That's all I've got for you this go round. Back to you, JC. Awesome, thanks Destiny. Comic-Con is definitely the place to be. I like to go to conventions dressed up as Waldo. All I have left for my cosplay is prescription circle glasses and I'll be all set. Now I think it's time to head over to Chloe as she hooks us up with some of the best books around. Oh, you know what time it is. It's time for some lit literature. and welcome to Lit Literature, where we turn up the literature. Who's ready to spend three months of fun in the sun? Well, that's definitely not on my agenda. So let's talk about summer reads. While everybody else will be frolicking through June, July, and August, you can hunker down with some of the new books of 2017. The first book, Breathe, Chloe, breathe. Oh my, Lanta. I went to the San Antonio Book Festival and I got some books signed. No big deal, right? Wrong. I happened upon Lainey Taylor, the author of Smoke and Bones, and I, I kind of fangirled. By kind of, I mean a lot. She was having a panel at, and she was hanging out at the front of the stage, so I walked right up to her, withholding all my inner screams, and I told her, hey, I read all of your books in one week, and I love them. And that's saying a lot, because she doesn't write small books. After I took a picture with her, I went to her panel, and I also asked her questions because of obvious fangirl reasons. At this point, I made it quite clear to Lainey Taylor that I'm a fangirl, especially in the way that I chatted with her before the book signing. Now, this may not seem important, but on everyone else's book, she signed 
sign for and then their name. However, if you look at my copy, you'll notice that she put, hi, Chloe, with a smiley face. And she didn't do that on any other reader's book. My heart practically swooned. Actually, my heart is still swooning. But enough fangirling, let's talk about the actual book. This book is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This story is about Laszlo Strange, who is an orphan. Because who doesn't love a good story about an orphan? And a junior librarian. Since a young age, he's been obsessed with this lost city of Weep. That in itself seems creepy. He continues to search for answers when a blue-skinned god from his dreams appears in reality, which makes everything more mysterious. I can't wait to start reading this book and geek out about all the things that she talked about. The next book is Alex and Eliza by Melissa De La Cruz. Those of you who don't know about Hamilton the Musical Rage, this book is an in-depth look at the relationship between Alexander Hamilton and Eliza Schuyler. It's your classic poor boy in love with the richest girl in the room. But if you have read any of Alex's letters, then you would know why all the girls swoon around him. This book is a perfect compliment for those who are ham for ham just like I am. This last book on my reading list is This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab, another author I am completely obsessed with, but that's a story for another day. This story is about Kate Harker and August Flynn, who are the heirs to a divided city, a city full of monsters. While it may sound cool, the only problem is when the human and monsters are drastically opposed to each other in ways that you might not think. Kate and August end up having to team up with each other when everything seems to go wrong. If you finish this book and you are itching for more, the second book is set to release in June. I am so excited for all the books I'm going to read this summer. In the comments below, tell me what books sound the most interesting to you. What are your top books for the summer or what books are you completely obsessed about? Before I sign off, it's time for What's Chloe Reading? Between the Notes by Sharon Huss wrote, History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, Squirrel Meets the World by Shannon Hale. And I'm gonna start reading this savage song before the second book comes out. I wanna wish everyone happy readings this summer. May they be filled with big books, shocking twists, and the opportunity to become obsessed with something new. And that's all I've got booked. Back to you, JC. Thanks, Chloe, for hooking us up with some awesome books. I'm pretty sure that if I saw anyone remotely famous, I'd freak out as well. Anyways, the Lakefront staff will be back to talk about our favorite movies of the semester here in a second, but for now, it's break time. Vista wants you. Your future belongs to you. Make your education yours too. Script. Uh, and then we'll do that. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it's like we're recording break time. That's okay. It's recording now. Okay, we do. Okay, let's. Go. Hi, welcome to Front Row, our new segment where we just get together and talk about some of our favorite movies. And uh, we're going to be talking about some of our favorite movies that came out this past semester. So I will go first, and the movie that I'm going to be talking about is Your Name. So Your Name has got to be one of my favorite movies this semester. Uh, it did technically come out last year, but uh, it just came to America this year. Uh, the localization finally came through. They have both a subtitled version and a uh, Japanese with subtitle version. And so uh, this past couple weeks ago, I went and saw the Japanese version with subtitles and it was freaking amazing. Uh, so the story goes that we follow uh, Mitsuha as she uh, starts randomly switching places with this boy named uh, Taki. 
And so what they wind up doing is figuring out each other's lives and start kind of living through the other person. It's really, really cool. Uh, but there's actually a lot more to this movie that I can't say anything about because it would be spoilers. Um, <laughs> but it's like really, really good and you guys really should see it. Would you say it's better to see it in subtitles or dubbed? Okay, so some of the jokes are actually explicitly for the Japanese language. Mm. So uh, you can see it with the English dubs and all the songs are also redubbed in English as well. So everything, um, they actually got a Japanese American band to do all the songs so they can do it in both languages. So you're not missing out on a lot, but some of the jokes and dialogue don't make quite as much sense mm. with that. So uh, just be aware of that, but they're both done really well. So you can see it in either, it's whatever you prefer. I saw the subtitled one and it was really good. So you can <laughs> nice. just choose either. But yeah, it was really good. I kind of want to see it now. You freaking should, it's <laughs> awesome. It's gotta be, it's almost one of my like favorite movies of all, like one of my favorite animated movies of all time. It's like oh. right up there with like Spirited Away. And, oh man, like, I'm mad that I it's, hadn't seen it so yeah, like, I'm definitely to gonna it. see that now. You have like, to see both Spirited Away and your name. Well, I love first. Spirited Away. I finally saw it this year, so you should be proud of me. Yeah, oh good for you. <laughs> Yes. Um, I but... finally saw it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Round of applause for Chloe, guys. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> it is it is a limited kind of release, so it's probably going to be out of theaters pretty quickly since it is kind of a niche movie. So go see it like as soon as possible because it's like really important. Thing. So yeah, cool. So that's my movie. That's my choice. Chloe, what is yours? Um, mine is Going Out in Style. So have you guys heard of it? I have. You told me about it, but I don't know like anything about it. I okay. have no idea. So you know those classic films where they're like, robbing banks and getting away from the police. You're yeah, like, yeah. Like those... Blues Brothers kind of deal. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> those are my favorite films. And I think there's like the best films for summer too. But there's a twist because they're 70 year old men <laughs> robbing <the banks. laughs> And so I think that's a great twist because you're like, okay, so we're not going to when you have those films, you're like, I don't want to see another like film with these 20 something year olds who are like too smart for the <laughs> world who are robbing banks. <laughs> But no, you have these 70 year old men who decide like after witnessing a robbing of a bank, they're like, let's rob a bank <laughs> because my house is going foreclosing. We're all kind of like on the edge of life kind of thing. <laughs> and let's do it. And an ad about is you have Morgan Freeman. So always good. Always good. And always good. if you stay for the end of the credits, you'll see like it's like hairdressers, Morgan Freeman's hairdressers, Morgan Freeman's <laughs> assistant, um, costume designer, Morgan Freeman's... So the, it takes a village, basically. Yeah. It takes a village. To do Just Morgan. for Morgan Freeman. Morgan, Morgan Freeman's Freeman. village. But it's really funny, and it's witty banter, and... There's a twist at the end. It's a good twist, too. Okay, good. Because it's not like a Shyamalan twist. No, it's, it's not like... a Shyamalan twist. It's a good twist. <laughs> so you're waiting, and you're like, oh, oh, good job, people. Good job, <laughs> Awesome. Sweet. Yeah. So what would you give it, what would you give it, like, a, out of out of 10? Out of 10, I definitely, I'm going to give it a 10. Because, oh, dang. yeah, I loved it. I want to watch it again. And it was, I wouldn't see, saw it with my parents. So, like, it was mm. something that anybody can watch and love. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet. So what was it called again? Going Out in Style. Going Out in Style. Okay, cool. Awesome. So what is your pick for movies of the semester? Okay, so my pick is Beauty and the Beast. Not a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Um, and I enjoyed it mainly because I was very skeptical about it, like going out because mm. I've read critiques about it and reviews and oh, yeah. everything and they were like, bashing the beast in his mm. CGI and like As there they was do just, with every CGI there was just awful awful reviews but there were some great ones too so I was like really confused whether I would like it or not being a fan of Disney and all and like I loved the animated version so I went out and I watched it with my mom and like I loved it like nice, nice if nice. I had to rate it I'd give it a 10 Wow. wow. Yeah. We all have like 10 movies. Like, <laughs> I'd give it a 10. We really said these are like our favorite movies. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like, um, so, okay. So I, I actually really was curious about this. The songs. Because the songs from the original Beauty and the Beast are like a big deal. Mm -hmm. Like Be Our Guest is like probably the best animated musical number like of all time. <laughs> yes. On point. Did, did they do Be Our Guest? They did. They did all did they, of the original songs. All the original. Okay. They did all the original songs and they added a few new ones. Okay. So, did they take out any of the old ones, or did they just keep all of them? They kept all of them. Did the performers do a good job with them? They did. Okay, that's that's like... the important part. That's the important part for me is that I can download the soundtrack and be like, "This sounds good. I'm okay with this." Honestly, <laughs> if but are you talking about like good and like because like there's movie good and then there's like 
good good. There's like Disney good. Yeah, like Disney good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on comparison, you know we love Moana. Is it like Moana good? I feel like I could say yes. Because you're setting up a lot of high. Yeah. I, I really you're am. A 10. Like, I really like, am. I didn't want to like a and nine. like I love Lin Manuel. I do. I love him. He's fabulous, and he did just an amazing job on Moana. And I feel like Beauty and the Beast soundtrack it did justice to the animated version, and it added new things that I was like, wow, this added like so much new, like stuff to the movie. Like that, plot-wise. Yeah, like we learned things about Belle and her mom. Mm-hmm. We learned about. Beast a little bit, like so, like you. So it feels you, like a more like full kind of Beauty and the Beast experience. Yeah. Okay. Nice. I can see that. I can nice. See that. So on a scale of like zero to ten, what would you give? You said ten, right? I gave it a ten. You gave it a solid ten. I also give my film <laughs> a solid ten. I don't know if I said that, but I give your name a ten. <laughs> we all have our ten movies. These We're are like, our favorite. If you, you have a movie that you really like this semester, please feel free to leave it in the comments. We'll be more than happy to check it out. So uh, that's all for front row. Thank you guys so much. And uh, I say we talk about some video games. Let's get ready to level up. Woo! Woo! (laughs) Hey, welcome to Level Up, where I give you the latest and greatest of video games, past, present, and future. Let's go. This first one's a little different from anything I talked about recently. If you watch Adult Swim or have been on the internet in the past year or so, you'd know about Rick and Morty, an animated Adult Swim cartoon. This show follows the misadventures of Morty and his alcoholic grandfather, Rick, as they travel through time and space. This show is bonkers, and I love it. It's a little crude at times, but its humor is definitely there. And since it's been a bit of a newer show, we haven't really seen Rick and Morty's presence in video games. Until now. Introducing Rick and Morty Virtual Rickality. Hey you! Are you tired of the same old boring reality day in and day out? Well now you can strap this box to your face and experience the lives of your favorite Rick and Morty characters! It's Rick and Morty VR! It's got- now I just recently got my hands on my own HTC Vive and I have to say this is hands down one of my favorite games that I have played for it. In the puzzle adventure game Virtual Rickality, you play as the floating head of a Morty clone doing whatever it is that Rick tells you to do. For instance, the first thing you do is Rick's laundry and then he kills you. One thing leads to another and you soon find yourself doing crazier and crazier things for Rick, like blasting a bunch of aliens with an automatic laser pistol. I think that the main selling point of this game is that it really feels like you're playing through an actual episode of Rick and Morty and you're the main character. There's constant banter coming from Rick and Morty along with some surprise side characters that makes the whole experience feel very satisfying to go through. My only complaint is that I wanted more when I was done. If you own an HTC Vive or an Oculus Rift with uh, touch controllers, this is a stellar title that you can be sure to give you a good time. You can get Rick and Morty Virtual Reality through Steam on PC today. Rick, uh, I mean, who's gonna play this? You're gonna play this, Morty. <laughs> what? Oh my god, y- y- you killed it, I mean me. I mean, I- You'll I, never uh, understand uh, its oh. majesty. VR for everyone. Everyone with the box on their face, Morty. One day you'll understand, Morty. It's, it's raining money here, VR land. It's raining money! Ha ha! Wubba dub dub! Now, I still haven't gotten my Nintendo Switch yet, and I really want one. And now, one of my favorite Rhythm games has been released for the Switch, so I'm in desperate need of one. Introducing Voice. Voice, spelled V-O-E-Z to confuse people, I guess, is a mobile game made by Rayark Inc., who have made some amazing rhythm games like Cytus and Demo for Android and iOS devices. In this game, you tap on constantly shifting channels of notes barreling down from above. It's hectic and amazingly satisfying to play. Now Voice is out for the Switch, and it's a match made in heaven. See, the biggest problem I had with Voice was that there was this really dumb free-to-play mechanic when it came to unlocking songs. Basically, you got like 10 free songs, and the rest of the 100 songs in the game had to be paid for, which can add up to over $100 if you buy them individually. Also, the game was online only, so if you were somewhere without 4G LTE at least, you weren't playing voice. However, the Nintendo Switch version fixes every one of my problems with this game. There's a base cost of 25 bucks, but you get every song in the game, and they're saved to your device, and the screen is bigger and brighter than your phone. While I do still enjoy the mobile version, the Switch definitely has the definitive way to play voice. You can get voice on the Nintendo Switch as a digital download today. (music) 
If you grew up around the late 90s, early 2000s, you were probably exposed to, at one point, the Nintendo 64. Released in September 24th, 1996, the 64 created a brand new way to play games in 3D and brought new life to a genre at the time, the 3D platformer. Nowadays, the genre has seen better days with, aside from maybe Mario, the best and most recent 3D platformer is... Uh... Actually, I don't know if there's been a good recent 3D platformer. Seriously, if you know any new ones that came out, leave a comment down below. Anyways, the guys and gals over at Playtonic Games decided to shift the landscape with their brand new game, Ukulele. Platonic Games is comprised of the same developers for the classic N64 game Banjo-Kazooie, and the influences are ridiculously similar here. Ukulele is basically the same game. You jump, glide, and fight your way through a lush 3D environment as you pick up collectibles and discover new areas. Now, there's not really too much else to say about this one. If you like Banjo-Kazooie as a kid, you'll be smiling from ear to ear as you play ukulele. However, reviews for this game have been the most mixed I think I've ever seen, ranging from perfect 10s all the way down to a 2 out of 10. Most of the poor reviews suggest that Ukulele isn't really a good game, and all the higher reviews are just wearing some really thick nostalgia goggles. And to their credit, yeah, actually, they're super right. This game isn't really anything amazing, and all the problems of 3D platformers past come back to haunt this one. However, this game was made for those of us who played games like Banjo-Kazooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, and Donkey Kong 64 as a kid. If you're looking for a trip down memory lane, Ukulele will satisfy you completely. You can get Ukulele on PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Wii U today. Next up is a game that I didn't even know existed. Introducing Guardians of the Galaxy Tangled Up in Blue. Guardians, this is the Nova Corps. You have to help us. This is a priority one distress call, Star-Lord. Thanos is here! Destroyer of Worlds, Big Glowy Gauntlet, Wrinkly Chin, yeah, I've heard of him. Time to rock and roll. This Telltale game series is definitely a Telltale game series. If you've played any of The Walking Dead, Batman, Tales from the Borderlands, Minecraft Story Mode, or any other Telltale game, you'll know what you're getting into. For those of you uninitiated, these games are all choose-your-own-adventure video games. You do a lot of watching rather than playing, but this means that Telltale can focus in on the choices you make when it comes to making a decision. All the problems of other Telltale games are definitely here, like the paper-thin gameplay, writing issues, and the fact that they're releasing this game in five parts over the course of a year or longer, that means that if you don't like the other Telltale games, then you're not going to like this one. However, when the writing in this game is good, it's really good. And like always, Telltale makes all your decisions feel like they really did mean something. It just sucks that they couldn't afford any of the members of the original movie's cast. I mean, come on, at least get Vin Diesel to do Groot's voice. Just get him into your studio and have him say, I am Groot, like 70 times. Would have been perfect. However, the rest of the cast does do a fantastic job, and for those of you looking for a little bit more Guardians of the Galaxy in your life, you can't really go wrong with this one. You can get Guardians of the Galaxy Tangled Up in Blue Episode 1 on Xbox One, PS4, iOS and Android, and PC today. What? Stop whatever your mouth is doing. That about does it for this week's Lakefront Entertainment. Thank you so much for watching us throughout the semester. We've got a bunch planned, so when you come back to Olu, be sure to check us out. Thank you to everyone who helped us out this semester. Thanks for watching, and have a great break. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Have a great summer. Did you say anything? No. <laughs> you don't wish them anything.